Hi, welcome back, scientists. You may notice that I have changed my hair and shirt for you, just to keep it interesting. So we're gonna keep talking about sound. In this part, we're gonna talk about visualizing particles. So when we were in the sim, and just in real life, let's think about what material does sound usually travel through when an instrument is being played? Take a second and think about that. If you've got somebody in the room, maybe tell them what you think. What material does sound travel through when an instrument's played? So in the sim, the material that uh, sound travels through is air. If you've ever been to a concert and you've heard instruments being played, it's the same thing. It's traveling through air to your ears. And so now I'm wondering, what did you observe as the sound energy from the instrument traveled through the air? And we're gonna go back to the sim one more time. We're gonna do one more example. I'm gonna play that one more time. We'll do that once more with our violin again. Okay. And so our question is, what did you observe as the sound energy from the instrument traveled through the air? I want you to think about that while we do a little bit more reading. So Sound on the Move, we read part of this book in our last lesson, and today we're actually gonna go back and we're going to look at one of the diagrams that we looked at uh, yesterday or in our last lesson. So we're gonna be looking at pages eight and nine. On pages eight and nine, there is a diagram to help us. And so diagrams in science help us provide, help us get important information about how things work. And in this example, it's how sound travels through materials. I'm gonna read you page eight. Page eight is on this side of the page. While I'm reading page eight, I'm gonna ask you to observe the diagram on page nine, and I want you to visualize, I want you to picture in your head what the movement uh, looks like to better understand how sound energy travels. So page eight, how do messages travel through the air, water, and ground? Many animals send sounds through the air, just like us. Others communicate underwater. Some animals even send sounds through the ground. The air, the water, and the ground are all materials. So is everything else you can touch. Materials are made up of millions and millions of tiny pieces called particles. Particles are too small to see, even with a microscope. We can't see particles, but we can visualize them. The diagram on the next page can help. Particles can move. Even in a solid material, like the ground, Particles can move a little bit. Animals send out sounds by moving the particles that make up materials like the air, water, and ground. Let's look at some examples of animal communication. We'll zoom in on this invisible world of particles to see how sounds travel through different materials. We're not gonna do that quite yet. We're gonna do that in another lesson, but I know that you're looking at this diagram. So in this diagram down here, which is the ground, We've got some particles, little pieces. They, to me, they look pretty close together. I see that they're in a square shape and I see some little arrows. When I look here, I see the particles, they're still pretty close together, but they're not in a nice neat shape. I don't see them in a square and I see more lines here. So I'm visualizing these particles moving a little bit more. And up here, We've got particles that are not very close together, and it looks like they every single one of them has an arrow going on here. So I'm visualizing those all just shooting off in different directions. So the book tells us that everything is made of particles, the air around us, water and solids like the ground. Materials are made of particles that are too small to see. And so that gives us one of our new vocabulary words, which you've heard me say, and that's particle. So a particle is a tiny piece of material that is too small to see. Now, I'm 
I'm wondering what you observe about the diagram and what you might think the different parts represent. So I told you some of my ideas and you might have some different ones. So if you have somebody in the room with you, this would be a really good time to share. Maybe show them the diagram and tell them, hey, this is what I see and this is what I think it means. I also want you to think about what you observed in the sim. So based on what you read in Sound on the Move, what do you think the dots in the sim represent? So we're back in the sim. I'll choose a different instrument for you this time. Let's do a piano. Hmm. I wonder what those dots in the sim represent. So based on what we read in Sound on the Move and what we observed in the sim today, I wonder what we can say about all materials, including water, air, and solids. I want you to make a prediction in your mind about what you think we're going to say about all of these materials. So what we're going to say is probably exactly what you were going to say, which is that all materials are made of particles that are too small to see. Absolutely everything is made of particles. Uh, my hand is made of particles, your shirt is made of particles, your computer is made of particles, everything is made of particles, your breath is made of particles. So, okay, now I know that everything is made of particles. And with scientist Rachel, I know one of the things that you did was you started making your sound diagrams from your mother dolphin to the calf, and you started talking about, okay, how does the mother dolphin communicate with her calf? So I'm gonna show you my wave diagram, or I'm sorry, my sound diagram that I started. So here's my sound diagram. When I made my sound diagram, I showed the mother dolphin, and I wasn't exactly sure how to show this, so I showed that she was making sounds with just some little lines. I was picturing sound coming into the calf's ear. Do dolphins have ears? Interesting. Now, what I learned today is that everything is made of particles. So that makes me think, okay, if the mother dolphin and the calf are in the water, the water is made of particles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a new color today. And I'm going to start drawing all these little particles. I know they're not super easy to see. So maybe if I use a little bit thicker, there we go, these will be easier to see. And so I won't make you watch me put all of my particles in. I'll finish my drawing later so that I can share it with you the next time that we talk. But that's what I'm going to add to my sound diagram. You might be adding something different, and I would be super excited to see and hear about what you created. All right. Now we're just gonna do a very quick reflection, and then that's going to end our lesson for today. So the big thing that we learned today Actually, I think there's two things that we learned today. One, we learned that everything is made of particles. And that's, that's pretty wild. Like I'm looking around my house and it's so crazy to think every single thing in my house is made of little tiny pieces. And the other thing that we learned about in our book today is that sound can travel through different kinds of materials. You saw this when you did some experiments in yesterday's lesson where you maybe tried to talk through a door or a pillow or a blanket or a wall. Sound can travel through different kinds of materials. We're going to keep playing around with some of these different ideas, and I'm really excited to see you in our next lesson, which is going to be lesson 2.3. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you soon.